You might have an idea about where we're going next, but let's go for this example, simplify another rational expression, 6x minus 18 over 6 minus 2x. Approach, we are hopefully getting it pretty smooth by now that we want to factor, then cancel. This is always what we're going to do when it comes to simplify. The numerator, we're looking for a GCF. We do have a GCF, we can bring out a 6 with x minus 3 in parentheses. From the denominator, do we have a GCF? It's that 2, we can divide each of these terms by 2, and in parentheses, 3 minus x. So now the question is, x minus 3 on top with 3 minus x in the denominator, can we cancel them? Are they the same? Are they equal to each other? With the addition, we saw that two terms added together it can happen in any order and they are equivalent. But the case is not the same for subtraction. We do not want to say that these terms are equal because they're a subtract. But what we can say is that they are opposites. So we can cancel opposites. Uh, one thing we can do is think back to a move we used to do uh, in factor by grouping. We did it a couple of other places. If we wanted to flip these two terms around and go from 3 minus x to x minus 3, we would change the sign of the number that we had out in front. We would change that 2 into a negative 2. Then we can see for sure x minus 3 we can cancel with x minus 3. We're left with 6 over negative 2. And can we simplify or divide evenly? Let's bring back that idea we were looking at earlier about evaluating to check our simplify. Now this simplify that equaled negative 3, we don't have any other variables in here. So are we really saying that this expression equals negative 3, it doesn't matter what number we put in place of x, it's always going to equal negative 3. That is what we're saying with this simplify. When we take this expression that absolutely it has unknown numbers, x is here, numerator and denominator, we do our good solid steps, factor, then cancel, we get a result negative 3. Well, let's just check it out. Let's evaluate x equals 3.5. Plugging in the 3.5 for each of our x's, and do order of operations, the multiply, and then the subtract, it does equal negative 3. And it's going to equal negative 3 for any number put in place of x except for whatever number would make our denominator equal to 0. So if you're thinking about a 3, that would give us a 0 over 0. But any other number in place of x, it's going to evaluate and equal negative 3. Pretty neat. Another example with opposites. Here's our expression to simplify, and it is already factored. We're already looking at all binomial factors, and nothing in any of these sets, in parentheses, sets of parentheses we can factor more. We cannot do more with x plus 5 or x plus 2, x minus 6 or 6 minus x. Nothing can be factored more. So our first move, which is factor, check it off, that's taken care of. Next is, what do we have to cancel? nothing really stands out except maybe the x minus 6 over 6 minus x. We want to get to a point where that absolutely does stand out because we absolutely can and should do some canceling there. We had a way where if we saw they were opposites we would change the sign of a number out in front but there's a bit of a quicker move we can choose to do when it comes to opposites. If we're certain that they're opposites we're gonna go ahead and cancel and put a negative sign out front, making our entire answer negative. And remember, a negative in front of a fraction is equal to a negative sign that shows up in the numerator or shows up in the denominator. We can run into some problems if we lose some sets of parentheses. And I think that's probably my reason for always liking to put the negative sign just right in front. I keep it out of the denominator, keep it out of the numerator, just put it right in front and I avoid some problems. And the type of problem I'm referring to is if you lose a set of parentheses we will have a mistake by just putting a, a negative on the x because it's really, it really would have to be a negative x 
minus 2. If it was in the denominator, it would need to be a negative x minus 5 if we did not have those sets of parentheses. So either we're making sure to distribute, or you leave the sets of parentheses there, and my opinion is that it's the safest to take that negative sign right out front. Okay, last example, and one for you to try, so pause the video and work to simplify it, and then come back and we'll look at this solution. Factoring the numerator, there is a GCF for y in parentheses 3 minus x. From the denominator, we have a GCF 2y squared. We can divide 2y squared out of each of these two terms. In parentheses, we have left over x squared minus 9. Remember about factoring completely. We don't want to just find the GCF. We always want to do that first and then look in parentheses and say, is this something we can factor more? And we've got a difference of squares. We can factor more. The x squared minus 9 is written as x plus 3 times x minus 3. The numerator, just GCF was all that we could do. Denominator, we had a GCF, and then a difference of squares. Now we're ready to start canceling. So when we do our step one factor, it must be factor completely. Now let's do the cancel. We have opposites. I'll cancel and put a negative sign out front. Then what do we have? A 4 over 2 will give us just a 2 on top. y on top with y squared in the denominator. That's leaving 1y in the denominator. So we have a negative fraction. It's a negative 2 over y times x plus 3.